do what he's going to do is diabolical. But see, if you're not reading this book, the Bible is the greatest, the Tanakh is the greatest book of strategy of the minds of what is happening on this earth. You cannot hide nothing from the living God. It's all written down here in the pages telling you exactly how they think and what they impose to do. And as it says in, in Proverbs 30, 14, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Mm. These people are setting to totally extinguish mm. the poor man from off this earth mm. like it belongs to him. Yeah. Then if you don't believe me, then call God a liar because he wrote it down. I didn't write this. He said to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Now that is something. Mm. You have to devour them off the planet. That's right. Now, let you got to get rid of them. Man, they, 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 hey, 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 let them come on. Let, let them come on because, look, if y'all don't help us, there's no help for us. We can forget it. It even says in Proverbs 22, 7, it said, The rich rule it over the poor. They rule over the poor. It doesn't matter who rules over the poor. What matters is how the poor is treated. That's what matters. I mean, you're going you're gonna to extinguish. Yeah, how will God told you exactly what they're going to do? They're going to extinguish these poor people from off this planet. And this is why it says in, 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 Psalm, in, in Psalm 10. And I read it to you and I'll read it to you again. Mm -hmm. Because the word of Yahweh is not, it doesn't lie. It's true. It's true. Psalm 10 2 it says mm -hmm. the wicked in his pride does persecute the poor that's, mm -hmm. his, that's his whole thing mm -hmm. it didn't say he would deal with somebody that can deal with him he's going to deal with the weakest mm -hmm. and take advantage of them beat them up uh, you know, you know it, as, as it says he, he, his pride and let's go to Psalm, uh, um, Proverbs 29 because we have to understand is that He's put things in place. And we better, this is why we need righteous teachers to give us an understanding so that we might survive. Or, other, or else, we're not going to be able to survive this. We're not. The anguish is going to take hold of us because who's going to stand up and fight for us? Who? Where is he? Where is our champion if it ain't the words of Yahweh? If Yahweh God don't help us, we have no help at all. You got to remember, the moment the ground start rocking, he gets scared. Mm -hmm. May the ground start rocking so he could get scared. Because he got something planned for us and we won't be able to stand. It says that man pride shall bring him low. See, he got a lot of pride. But his pride is going to bring him low. And, and as it says in Pro, as, as Proverbs 29, 23, Proverbs 16. See, you got to understand, look, he might swing, but we want to know. Like it says, study. Study your salvation. Understanding what is necessary for you. Mm -hmm. Because you're in trouble if you don't have no other way of dealing with this. You're going to get excited. You're going to go downtown and protest. He wants you to do that. He ain't going to give you nothing. You ain't going to get nothing. It says in Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction. And a haughty spirit before he falls. So his pride is going to deceive him. He's too proud. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, in the book of the, uh, of the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha will tell you what pride, pride is something that when you do, you get mixed up with pride, you become a loser. That is a very serious indictment of any human being to take and become that proud to where you take, take and do other people in because you know they have no other help 
and ain't nobody coming to rescue them, mm -hmm. and therefore you take total advantage. But Yahweh God got something for them. But the thing is that we must become aware, very aware of what is happening around us. So, and I would like to read about pride. This is in the Apocrypha Ecclesiastes. Um, um, let me see, chapter 10. I'm going to read ver uh, verse 7. Pride is hateful before Allah and man. Pride is hatred. Hateful. Pride is hateful. Yeah. And by, and by both does one commit iniquity. See. The beginning of pride is when one departs from Allah and his heart is turned away from his maker. See? He said the beginning of pride is when one departs from Allah and his heart is turned away from his maker. And that's, um, as I said, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 10, that was verse 7, that's 12. I would like to go on and read 13. For pride is the beginning of sin, mm. and he that has it shall pour out abomination, and therefore Yahweh brought up and Yahweh brought upon them strange calamities. See, when they, strange things are going to happen. Strange things are going to happen. He said, for pride is the beginning of sin. And he that has it shall pour out abomination. And therefore Yahweh brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So this is what pride is going to introduce. Because he has a lot of pride. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody... Ain't nobody's going to... Um, you see the whole nation turned up against that boy? Yeah. The you understand? The whole nation turned up against, uh, against the injustice of, of the young man. Yes. Because they knew it was an injustice. But you have to understand is that they weren't, turn, they weren't turning out because of a white person. They was turning out for the injustice of the system to execute is proper verdict. But the point is if nobody tampered with those jurors, then it the, 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 the verdict that they brought stands on them. See a lot of people don't understand that if you as a juror juror go and hear the testimony of a man and he's executed and then you find out that he never committed the crime then somebody's can be, be considered as a murderer. <laughs> you got to be very careful. Everything you hear is not necessarily the truth. Everything you see does not necessarily give you the understanding. Mm -hmm. You see two men, they up there, you automatically think they're fighting. They could be boxing or playing. Mm -hmm. But what you see doesn't know. It's bad enough you can hear something. It's bad enough you can see something and yet still be wrong. Mm -hmm. So... How do we judge right or wrong? In this society, they have built out of the proportion such as when you come into a metropolis, who knows you? But if you go upstate in one of those towns, everybody knows a stranger that comes in. Mm -hmm. They know who lives there. Mm -hmm. But in here, you don't know. But at the same time, Yahweh God is telling us something. He wants you to fortify yourself in keeping of the commandments. You don't have no other hope. There's no other hope for you. Other than to serve Yahweh God. With all the judgments that he judged. He has a right to do the evil in the earth that he's doing. And you, should, you have the right to keep the commandments. Now you can sit there. And you can talk about how unjust he is. But you have to realize this. Do something for yourself to bring about the circumstances that would be acceptable. And that is this. Keep the Shabbat. Keep the laws and bring the Ruach into play. Because all of this is an appointed time. The time, remember, this is our brother Esau that Isaac blessed. And he gave him the sword. That he has been a mischief throughout this whole entire globe. He has global power. He's been everywhere. He stomped on everybody who, with, with, with his might and has made him right. He doesn't see that anybody's going to what? Anybody's going to chastise him. Mm -hmm. 
Where, who's going to chastise them? Who is more mighty? When you go and, and read what the circumstances that he has said, even in the book of Re Revelation, it tells you that what type of kingdom he has and, and, and is coming to be more pronounced each and every day. Revelation 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lit with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is falling, and has become what? The habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of her wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth has committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So he's talking about Babylon, that great city that, that has made everybody rich, and de therefore it has become the habitation. Mean, uh, the city that made everybody rich, made everyone rich. America has made That's who? America. Who hasn't made what well, it? Who hasn't made everybody rich? But but America. America. Mm -hmm. you look, she believe me. What will happen to the economics of America will tumble the whole entire world economy because nothing has value unless somebody want to buy it. And the thing about it is that you never cut the throat of the person that's buying your product. Yeah. America buys everything. 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 Nixon's got it there. That's right. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It shows you that the consumer plays a great role in the destiny of itself and the people. Mm -hmm. Because somebody, if, you, if you're creating something, you want somebody to buy it. You know, and I want to say that as it says in Psalm, in the Psalm 34, Psalm 34. Praise be the name of Yahweh God. Psalm 34. Mm -hmm. um, verse. Um, verse 31. Mm -hmm. No. Psalm 34, verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. So those that hate us, when we keep the commandments, how are they going to be desolate? Mm -hmm. So when you hate a righteous man for his righteousness, you're going to perish. Mm -hmm. Because, see, it says the wicked, his eyes are privately set up against the poor. It said, and therefore he looks... And um, Psalm 37, verse 32. The wicked watches the righteous mm -hmm. and seek it to slay him. Right. That's what he does. Well, that's what they do in all. Yeah. They watch us. Every move we make. That, yeah, but, but that's Chinese all right. Chinese watch. Everybody watches. But, but see, that's all right. Our, their life, as it says in Psalm 37, verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of your house. Mm -hmm. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. So our salvation, our strength is in your house. We don't have to worry about it. Your house, that's why he said, lean, don't lean on your understanding. If you're in righteousness, then go forward. Because your house is going to take care of you. You understand? And all the words here, it says... All these words, we rest our whole life on them. If these words are wrong, then not only will we perish, but so will the wicked man. Look at the earth. It's all polluted. Oh, boy. Yes. And when they came here, everything was virgin. Now, you they, ever about that, Rabbi? they have taught When it. they came here, boy, the virgin, the water was sweet as honey, big trees, I'm all kinds of animals. The water in here used to be so clean. I used to be able to do things with that water that I would never do now because it's so polluted. But they can continue to do what they're going to do because there's a time and a season, mm -hmm. as it says, because how all of this is based on time. Mm -hmm. 
the, the wicked man will be given the time to reprieve himself from ungodliness. And when that time is up, it's finished. And this is why Yahweh says, Seek me while I can be found. And he told you. And this is why it's very important, you know, that we do what it says in Zephaniah. And the book of Zephaniah it tells you what we should do. Whether we want to do it or not. But Yahweh God has told us what to do. And we should, if we don't take these things seriously, then circumstances will show. Um, Ze Zephaniah 2, 1. Gather yourself together, yea, gather yourself together, O nation not desire. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to gather ourselves together. Come together. Be at peace. And pray. And do that which is acceptable in the eyes of your house. Because the day is coming. The day, day, day is coming where, where you won't be able to sit down so easily at a table and, and, and expound these words. That's right. Because these words are powerful words. And therefore the day is coming where these words will not be heard. Because they're going to be very angry about. And let me, let me read this in Amos chapter 8 verse 11. Behold the day come and say Yahweh that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread nor thirst for water. But for hearing the word of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro. Seeking the word of Yahweh, and they shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgin and the young man faint for thirst. See? Because there's going to come a time you won't be able to get this word. Mm -hmm. you, hey, hey, hey. People going to be too busy trying to do what they can for the survival. And this is the time where you can sit down. Don't be surprised if they come and knock on your doors and take your Bibles. Don't, Don't, be mm -hmm. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Because it's coming. You know what I'm Don't be surprised because they, they, that's why they, they're changing the King James, King James Version. They're changing the Bible. You used to be able to go in the street and find them. You can't find them that easy that much. That much. I used to be able to go by and look on, you know, when the people be selling books, I could go by and pick up Bibles. You can't do it now. They're, they're very scared. So if you got a Bible, read it and know that Yahweh God has said some beautiful things about you. And may Yahweh bless you, my brother. And I thank you that you have allowed me to come and sit with you and expound on these great and wonderful and awesome words. For may Yahweh be with you and keep you and strengthen you. And may Yahweh God, who is God, may He remember you in your goings and your coming. Ya Barakaka, Ya Hawaha, Waya Shamaraka, Ya Ra, Ya Hawaha, Panayua, Alayaka, Waya Kanakai, Ya Shaha, Ya Hawaha, Panayua, Alayaka, Waya Shema, Laka, Shala, Rama, Ya Hawa bless thee and keep thee, Ya Hawa make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, Ya Hawa lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. May your days upon this earth. May it be comfortable. Gura kaya napashaya ata ya hawaha. Wakala kara baya ata. Shema kodashua bara kaya napashaya ata ya hawaha. Wa Allah dasha kahaya. Kala kama wala yawa asalaka. La kala avana kaya harapa la kala da kala wa ya kaya haga wa la ma sha khata kaya ya kaya hamata wa kaya khasada wa ra khamaya ma hamasha ba ya bata wa ba adayaka Tata Kadasha Kanashura Na Aparaya Kaya Blessed be Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
Bless his holy name. Bless your power, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Who forgiveth all my iniquity, who healeth all my disease, who redeemeth thy life from the pit, who encompass thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy old age with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. May Yahweh continue to bless you. Amen. I like to read the last prayer and may the Spirit truly guide you and may all things in righteousness befall you that you will know that you have a gracious and wonderful God. Tawaba Yahawaha Lama Ahwana Baya Wama Tizraha Waya Da'a Khasaya Bawa Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. May Yahweh bless you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.